Okay, hi class. Um, I just thought I'd do a little more nomenclature, so this is another video boost. Um, the, um, so in class, one of the classes we got a little further than the other class. Um, the, so the second lecture we didn't get quite as far. And I was just about to talk about something that a lot of people asked me about during the day, and that is the way you work when you have a ring system with one double bond. Okay, sometimes with two double bonds as well. Um, I have to comment that you probably can hear my dog in the background. Somebody wrote me a note about it the other day. They said they heard maracas in the background. That is my dog, because he gets excited when we're doing this. So if you hear any weird noises, that's my dog. Okay, so anyway, um, if you have something like this, all right, the way the rules work, okay, and it's kind of weird, is that you would call this a cyclohexene. And as I said in class, this double bond is automatically number one because you're in a ring, okay? And the ring has no beginning or an end, and this is a high priority group, so it gets the number one position. So I don't need the number for that, okay? But although it's sort of counterintuitive, you're gonna, the rules say that you have to give the substituent, if you have a substituent on the double bond, you have to give it the number one position. So you have to call this one and this two rather than calling this one and this two. Now, the way I look at it is I look at the double bond as like a little like microcosm of the molecule. And this is like the high priority region of the, of the ring. And so you're giving this number one in that region. Okay, that's a way to think about it. And it is, again, rules are arbitrary. I also know that there's a couple typos in the textbook on this topic. But I know this rule. And you go one, two three, four, five, six. So this is um, um, one, six dimethyl cyclohexane instead of what you might want to do, which is two, three dimethyl cyclohexane. Now, you know, the way this translates into other rings, there's a lot of times it doesn't come into play at all. So for example, if I had um, a ring with, um, you know, a bunch of double bonds, like something like this, and there's some substituent like that hanging off of it, you're going to number it. You, the, your first priority is to give these the lowest numbers. So it's either going to be 135 or 135. Now, since there are no substituents on these double bonds, and by the way, one of these has to be one, even if there is a substituent there. One of those has to be number one, okay? So it's not like any substituent. It's if you have one double bond or a particular arrangement of double bonds. So you go 135, 135. In this case, because they're the same in both directions, you would then go to the substituent. So it's better to go 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and call it 7, I don't even know how many carbon. I have 8 carbon. So it's 7 methyl cyclo. Um, Sorry about that. 7 methyl cyclo, um, and this would be one, and I'm going to use, and by the way, I kept saying 1973, but it was actually 1979 um, nomenclature rules. 135 cyclo octa triene. And I did check things. I was asked a few questions about do you leave the A in if you use the 1991 rules? Yes. I'm not going to do that every time. In other words, every time I write a name, I'm not going to write it in 1979 format and 1991. I'm going to pretty much write it in 1979 because that's the way your textbook is written. Okay? So um, the A, but the A does stay in. All the vowels stay the same way, the way I described them in class. So that was correct. Um, let me give you another problem to look at. You can kind of practice. So um, this problem is in... The um, one of the problem sets or something like this. I want to just show you how you would do this. I'm going to change it a little bit, so this will help you with that problem. It looks like this. And someone today asked me why this. Um, I forget where the double bond was. Oh, the double bond's here. Yeah, it's one of these deals. And they were asking me about numbering this thing and. 
If you have a structure like this, just to go over how you would number it, you would call it a cyclopentene. Okay, now again, this would be number one, all right? Now, according to that weird rule, this is number one. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, okay? So the question is, now again, why is that? Because that's like your little micro world and you're giving that number one priority, all right? Now, similarly, if you had some big ring, like say I had some ring like this and had three double bonds in it, like similar to the one I just showed, um, if you had something there, you would start numbering here because there's no way you could encompass all the double bonds. On the other hand, if I had a substituent here, I would have to call this number one, obviously, okay? Um, but you would call this number one even if um, you had, you know, substituents here. This is number one. All right, but again, I think with multiple double bonds, it's pretty straightforward. All right, what are you going to call this group right here? This is two carbons. It's a triple bond. So what you're going to call it is an ethinyl group. Okay, this, this chain, the way you do this is you number out one, two, three, okay? So this would be called a one propenyl group. Now notice what I'm doing here. I'm incorporating the double and triple bond nomenclature into the side chain. Okay, so once you learn those rules, you can pretty much do anything. Now why do I need the number here and I don't need the number here? I need the number here because it makes a difference if the double bond is between one or two and two or three. But in this case, because there are only two carbons, the, the triple bond has to be between one and two. So that's a case where the, the number would be redundant even though it's in the number one position. And then of course this would just be called a bromo. So what would be the whole name be? Um, you would put these in alphabetical order. So first I would put, um, let's say bromo. So it would be uh, four, is that right? Four bromo. Okay. And then next would be one eth ethinyl. You don't really have to parenthesize that because there's no complexity to that. Um, then, oh, yeah, and this one does not refer to that. Maybe I will put it in a parenthesis. Okay, you know why? Because I want to distinguish that one. But this one is telling you what position it is on the chain. So I will put that in a parenthesis. And then, five, right, then I'll put it in parentheses so you can distinguish the numbers. One propenyl, okay, and then the root name, cyclo, and again, you don't need the number in this, this name. Okay, what time is it? Eight minutes. Okay, so I'm going to do one more, okay. So this is, again, nomenclature video boost, okay. On, third, on Wednesday, what we're going to ramp up to are alcohols, okay? And so the deal with alcohols, which I will write out on the board, and you do have it in your sheets, alcohols are higher priority than alkenes and alkynes, okay? So they take, they kind of rule the roost over alkenes and alkynes. So your, prior, your goal is going to be to get the alcohol into the, the name. And the ending for alcohols is all, like O-L. So... Um, your goal is going to be first to get the alcohol into the, into the main chain. So your secondary goal is to get um, double bonds and triple bonds into the chain, if you can. Your tertiary goal is to worry about substituents, okay? So, for example, just to get you started, you can start thinking about this a little bit. Okay, so say I had something like this. Um, and I'll just throw like a bromine off the end here. Okay, if I had something like that, okay, um, let me put two double bonds in just to make, or two double bonds to make it kind of interesting. If I had that, this is what my goal would be. My goal would be, I would see this is the high priority group, and this is a fairly long chain two, four, six, seven, and this is bigger than the ring. So I would make this my main chain in all likelihood here because it's got the OH. And then I try to pack these double bonds into that chain. So my root name here would be um, hep. This is a hep 
ta di in, okay, all. Okay, that would be the ending. So I just want to see if you can see how this fits in to what we've been doing. All right, where are these double bonds? Well, the numbering is also dictated by the alcohol. So the numbering is going to go this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so again, I'm trying to get that in if I can get the double bonds in as well. So where are the double bonds? The double bonds are at, this is two, three, four, and six. So it's a four comma six heptadiene two, you have to put the number in, two all. Now sometimes people get confused because if I had a ring, like if I had a ring like this, okay, say I had that ring, this would be called cyclohexene all, okay? And it would be, it wouldn't look like that because that's totally spelled wrong. Okay, sorry. Hexene all, okay? So in this case, this would automatically be number one and this would be in the two position. So this would be a two cyclohexene and I wouldn't even need the number because the number would be implied for that OH because this is a ring. But realize in chains, you have to go from terminus to terminus. So this is in the number two position, and there are many positions that OH could be in, so you have to designate it. So this is a 4,6 heptadiene 2 all. And then what would this side chain be called? Okay, this side chain would be called, this is a cyclohexyl, and you'd number this way. So you'd say it's a 2 bromo cyclohexyl in parentheses, and it's sitting on number seven, okay? So if I were gonna finish this particular name, again, note, this little guy here is just two cyclohexene, one all, but you don't have to put the one in. And the OL will be, the alcohol will be the beginning of the name. Notice I'm leaving the E out. Why am I leaving the E out? Because the suffix begins with an O, okay? So just to finish this really quickly, um, this is two bromo, Cyclo, cyclo, hexyl, oh my gosh, I'm just like such a mess here, sorry. Cyclo, hexyl, and then this is in the seven position, so it's seven, two bromo, cyclo, hexyl, dash, four comma six, dash, heptadiene, two, all. That's the name of that compound. Okay, so we're going to go over that on Wednesday, but people who are kind of working along, you can look at that and incorporate that into what you're doing. Okay, I'll see you in class on Wednesday.